Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sound for Moritz, Leo speaking. Today we are going to continue the journey and learning progressions and we are going to explore block chords, um, arpeggiators and the strummer. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Okay, I have already set up progressions with some uh, audio sources, in this case Synth Master 2. And I also have uh, grunt stuff here, which shows me also the notes coming out from progressions. So just to show you a little bit, on the first audio channel here, we have Synth Master 2, and we have a bass, and that is connected to the progression output 1, or port 1, okay? The second audio source, which is connected to progression output 2, is um, a soft pad, again, from Synth Master 2. The third one, it's a pluck sound and is connected, of course, to the uh, third output from progression. And the fourth one, it's um, a guitar, a Spanish nylon guitar, and it is connected to uh, progression again through output number four. Now, just to show you, grand stuff here is connected to, um, as, as you can see, to all ports from um, progression so that you can monitor all the notes from all the ports which are active from progressions. Okay, let's open on progressions. And as you can see, I have um, an sized window in this way because I can also have grand stuff like so open as well on the right hand side. I have left everything as default. I set the um, host to be AUM and then I set the, I left the key in C, the mode to major, the freedom to one, and the complexity to basic, and then I clicked on generate to just generate a simple um, chord progressions. Now, I have selected block chords here, and if I click play, you see the notes which are coming out from output number, um, let me show you actually the uh, where you configure the uh, outputs. So if you go here on the hamburger menu, on the settings, and then you click on the output MIDI port assignment, you can see that the base output is on port number one, the block chords are on port number two, the arpeggiator on port number three, and the strummy on port number four. And that is why I made the connection that I referenced earlier to Symphomaster 2 in instances in that way. So <clears throat> without further ado, if I click now on play on AUM, you will hear only the block chords and not bass note because it is not active here. And you will see the block chords play here on uh, uh, Grand Stuff. And uh, also I want you to know, uh, to notice some on the controls here, on the lower part of the screen, on the left lower part of the screen, you have uh, the length of the measure, which is in four bits. For example, you have the octave low. So let me show you as I increase that, for example. You can also set the velocity curve, the note velocity. Also, you have a setting for the gates, for the bass gate, and also the note gate, and then you have a bit divider. So the, if you increase these, of course, it will go faster, and I will show you that uh, in a moment. And um, and also you have the strum uh, speed as well, which allows you to change the strumming um, speed between notes as uh, the strumming is performed by progression. So now let's enable the bass note here and you will see now on Grand Staff that you have a bass note as well. And it's nice to have different ports assigned to different instruments. So in this case, I have the soft pad for the block chords and I have the ba that bass sound for the bass notes. Really nice, right? Now, let's focus a little bit more on block chords. If you click and hold on block chords, it comes up with this set of different options. The default one is just playing the chords, as you know. The second one is triggered bass, and it works only if you have bass note active. And you will see that the bass is triggered multiple times, so let's play.
Then the next one is actually ascending chord notes. And so pay attention at the notes uh, of, the of the block chords which are played in ascending mode. It's like an arpeggio, right? The same you can have in descending chord notes as well. You also have another option here, which is random chord notes, which is really nice. The name says is playing chord notes randomly. Okay, next you can also set the arpeggiato. You click on it to activate it, and it will show you on this screen here on the bottom right hand side the pattern for that arpeggiato. Okay, so the default one is ARP style, default ARP, ARP pattern one, and if you click here, you can select the six different one, and you can you can also load a custom ARP. So let me show you some of them. now is that the block chords from the soft pad are not played any longer. You still have the bass note and then you have the arpeggetto which is pointed to a different instrument in Synth Master 2 and is playing that pluck sound for uh, the notes which are showed here on the screen. Now let's change for example to pattern number 3 and let's play. On uh, pattern four, it doesn't play the entire pattern because we have the bit divided to two. Let me show you now, as I mentioned earlier, modifying the bit divider to four, and I will play the entire pattern because the play of the arpeggiato is double the speed. So let's try again. <laughs> Next, you have a strummer as well, and you have different patterns for the strummer as well. So let's start from the first one, which I will show you here. And I will dedicate a number of tutorial on uh, how to create uh, uh, patterns for the arpeggiato and for the strummer later on. So let's play with this. Of course, you can also load a custom strum as well in terms of that pattern. Here you have also an option to continue the pattern playing from the position that it is at when the chord changes, which is really useful. Okay, I hope you agree with me, which um, uh, that is this is really nice to have different output ports. Um, that you can configure to different uh, synth or audio sources inside the UM. This gives you the ability, of course, to play some interesting uh, uh, composition just using one single instance of progression. And of course, I will create also a tutorial which will show you how to use multiple instances of progressions and therefore sync all of them as well, which is quite unique. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and as always, see you next time. Bye.